Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to uh, Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone's been having a great day, great week. It's almost Christmas. I'm not an adherent to the Christian faith, but due to the fact that we live under Judeo-Christian values in the Western civilization, that means that I am forcibly partaking in these festivities, even though, like I said, I am not a fan. And if you watch my previous videos, you know how strong I feel against that particular religion. But that's not the topic of this conversation for today. So, um, I know I made a preview. I, I'm at a point right now, like I'm still listening to the History of Rome podcast by Mike Duncan, which you can find on YouTube. A1, like I said, if you really... Um, I'm getting a lot of inspiration because like I, I've said before, it, Rome really is my favorite state. It's fascinating to study. There's a lot to learn from. So the last video that I made um, concerning Rome, where we last left them, uh, you know, the crisis of the third century is in full force. And, you know, I was making the case that the schizophrenia that was embedded in the Roman government due to not wanting to, you know, call what they saw in the mirror um, really caused a severe fracture, fracture in the system in the, the social political environment in Rome. And, you know, because basically, because once you get to that point, Rome really became an arm of the military. Everything was focused on the military. Money, resources, acquisitioning, everything was for the soldiers. And like I said, it does, it was a valid reason. There was a valid reason for placing so much emphasis on your military due to all these different peoples trying to take your motherfucking land so um it was a very it's a very tumultuous time indeed um and then i said that they were not really able to solve i don't want to make it seem like i i'm i'm of the opinion that they never tried of course they tried yeah because i know that in the last time i'm like oh you would think that after all this time they would have come up with something i was speaking out of term and i felt like i might have misconstrued what i meant so, um they did try just nothing ever worked out. And it goes back to the original premise. It goes to one of the original talking points of that video was that they don't have the resources and technology in order to maintain an empire of that magnitude. It's just not going to happen. And we're going to talk about another aspect today as to why that's just not possible. And that's the human condition. All governments are inherently flawed because we humans are inherently flawed and we are greedy little fuckers. And obviously, you could point that to the whole biological, you know, back to our cerebral cortex. And, you know, our greed is our need to constantly get more resources to maintain our family, maintain ourselves and stuff like that. So all of these social, sociological impulses are rooted in biological, really archaic, really, you know. But we're not talking about social Darwinism or anything like that. So now I'm talking about Diocletian. So Diocletian, the great state builder or attempted to make a great state. And, you know, he's the one that really enacted a lot of the, 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 the reforms that are going to perpetrate and transform and, you know, really take shape into the medieval ages, and, and into the Middle Ages, sorry, and the medieval times and stuff like that, you know, with the dukes and the diocese and the command economies and how people like, like if your father was a farmer, you're gonna be a farmer, your son's gonna be a farmer. So, while it's not exactly serfdom, the the it's going to be a very you can see the transition. It's very easy. It's not it doesn't go for a free market. Everybody doing whatever the fuck they want to do, and then from one night to the next, everybody's stuck in a plot of land with a castle with a guy looking over them with the military trying to fight. So a lot of these structures that are that really personify medieval times and the Middle Ages start to become enacted in Diocletian's reign. And that's why Diocletian is definitely considered a state builder. And I completely forgot, it's been a long, that's why I'm reading a lot of Roman history because I really, it's been a minute. And especially during the late Roman Empire, um, there's not a, really a whole lot of information I've been able to gather except from, you know, uh, 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 like certain books or lectures and videos and podcasts like the one that I've been talking about. Because there's just a paucity of evidence and there's a paucity of sources during that time period because it's tumultuous. Who the hell is going to be focusing on writing a book when you don't even know if you're going to live tomorrow? So, 
Um, Diocletian really was a fundamental figure or the fundamental figure for the thousand years that came in afterwards, you know, um, how he completely systematized everything. He threw in this giant bureaucracy. People were saying, oh, it's a bloated bureaucracy. I mean, uh, Mike Duck is not the only one that's made the case that I feel like that is a bit overblown regarding, the, like, in relation to the civilized, in relation to the total population and the, how many people are actually working in the government, it's quite minimal. There's only like a couple, like, 10, 20,000 people working in the government while there's 20, 30 million people out there. So the ratio is not really exactly, I would call, bloated. But, uh, so, so be that as it may, uh, Diocletian really didn't make a feasible, a really solid attempt. He was not aware of economy. He was not aware of inflation. He was not aware of the devaluing of currency and how that's going to exasperate issues in the Rome. In Rome, that is just going to make things a whole lot worse later down the road. But they didn't know about that. They don't know about inflation. They know about the devaluing of coins, and he knew that devaluing coins is not going to help anything. And that's why he made a whole currency system that never worked. And he basically even went to the border system because he was aware that the currency sucked. That it was devalued so bad and making more of it is not going to do anything. So he even became a barter system. He even acted a barter system like, oh, this town has to put up this many horses and this many stuff for this much. And so because so the currency was basically taken out of the equation. There was a lot of events, but at the same time, there was a whole lot of aggression. <laughs> but it makes sense due to the the... the the environment at that time you know he was just trying to make the best out of out of what was possible in that time period and with you know the la uh, uh, the amount of information available so he did really do um a lot of reforms he's the famous man who created the tetrarchy you know really splitting up because like i was saying in the video before that the big problem is that you can't have this big ass empire because there's just not enough, like you can't attenuate all the different circ, all the different problems are going to prop up. And it's not just going to be like one after the other. Like, oh, so you're done with this. Now you could go and do this because that just popped up. Like, no, there's this confluence of different forces at play at the same time that you have to attenuate and you have to expunge. Because that's the point of the, that's, that's the whole legitimacy of your government, the whole legitimate, the, the, the fundamental legitimate, uh, the fundamental pillars that legitimize a government is the safety of its citizens. Like, why the hell am I here under your country paying taxes if you can't even protect me? So that's why there was a whole overemphasis on the military as well. So, and then he, you know, he created the Tetrarchy with Gallienus, uh, uh, no, not Gallienus, uh, uh, who was it? Maximian Galga, Gallus, Galgius, Galgus, or, and, and, Const, and Constantius, which is Constantine the Great's father. And he split out to four different zones, and the Augustus and the and the Caesar, so one side and then the other side, and then obviously the Augustus, which he's the the big boy, the, the senior foreigner, he is not going to be dealing with all the big problems. So Maximian was the Augustus on the western side, and Constantius was the the uh, the Caesar. He was given the promise, the provinces that had the most problems because he is the the junior official in the whole thing. So, if you're your junior, you're gonna be the one that gets fought because it's just your time. You have to be the one to put in the work and put in the time necessary because you know that's just how the world works, and it obviously makes sense. Um, so he did make a great attempt, and he did make the best that he could. But obviously, if you read history, you know that it immediately falls apart once he's like, all right, guys, we're getting a little too old now. Let's dump it all to the next generation. I'm getting too old. Uh, I think it's time for me to retire. Maximian, you need to retire too because I'm retiring. The problem is that what if Maximian doesn't fucking want to retire? He's like, dude, I'm younger than you. I, I'm in my prime of my life. I'm going to have to give up my role for you. And then, and then that becomes... And then that's where we get to the inherent flaw because uh, whenever anyone in power has a chance, they're going to give their power to their sons. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. And it's been going on. You know, we could talk about the five good emperors, even though I don't know how Nerva counts, even though the only reason Nerva counts as the five good emperors is because he picked Trajan. 
people put this overemphasis and they overblow like, oh, these, it was a meritocracy and these men selected men that they knew that they were going to be great. They never selected sons. They never selected uh, 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 relatives. And they don't take into account that the reason they didn't select relatives is because they didn't have any relatives. They didn't have any sons. Trajan didn't have a son. Hadrian, um, Antonius Pius, none of them had sons. And then you go to Marcus Aurelius, for the great emperor he is, and all his meditation shit, what the fuck did he do? He put his son Commodus as king. And even before he became king, like even before he died, there was a blatant signs that there was something wrong with this little kid. But he put him in anyways. Because that's just how we are. We always want to make sure that the power that we have is passed on to our children so they could continue on the legacy. Like, it, it, I'm not blaming anything for it. It's just a, a, it's just an inherent human mechanism in relation to, our, in relation to power. But that's what's going to happen with the Tetrarchy. For all the things that you could do, the, the sons of the men that have been ruling are going to want in. You can't just go over them. It's just not going to happen. It's it, it's heretical. Like People are going to feel put off. People are going to feel like they've been let out. Like, oh, I want to be part of the play. Who says I can't be part of it? Who says I can't rule? Who says I can't be the top gun? Like, Diocletian retires. He sees his, crum his empire crumble. And then Constantine the Great. What a piece of shit. Constantine, he's just like, fuck this tetrarchy. I'm ruling the whole thing. I want to reunite the whole goddamn thing. Because it became a civil war right after. So it was never solved. It was never solved. And it devolves and it devolves and it devolves and it devolves. Obviously to 476 when you basically have puppet emperors for barbarian kings and stuff like that. Like, you know, you have Romulus, Romulus, uh, Romulus Augustus. Uh, well, what was the last name of the last emperor? The fucking Jir Romulus Augustus, right? Yeah, he was opposed in 476 by one of the Ostrogoths. Um, you know, and the whole famous thing that he sent the purple robe to Constantinople and said, well, yeah, we don't need that shit anymore. Well, I'll be a vassal, but we don't need that shit anymore. And we're going to talk about this as it continues to go on because the more I read about Roman history, the more I realize how deep, how deep, how uh, its values and its social values have been embedded into our modern civilization. I feel like people don't really take into consideration how much we owe. To Rome. With all its flaws and all this shit, it really shaped the course of events in ways that I could not even fathom before. Uh, it's absolutely fascinating. It's a reason. There's a reason why people know more that people think Hercules is the correct name when it's actually Heracles. You know, not many people, oh, Hercules. I'm like, it's not Hercules, you dumb bitch. That's the Latin translation. It's Heracles. But, uh,. I had a really funny anecdote about that. I remember I was at a hookah bar and some guy that I was talking to is like, I'm the type of guy that you can't lie about knowing history because um, if you haven't already noticed, I'm a big fan. So this guy was talking and then we started striking into a conversation about Greek mythology. And, he, and, and you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a, you know, I like the mythology. It's very interesting. He's like, yeah, man, I'm a big Greek. Um, philosophy aficionado my fairy hero is hercules i think he's the best i love his story blah, blah 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 and in my head i'm like you're not a fucking greek fan like no greek fan is gonna make the egregious misstep of calling that guy hercules it's hercules pisses me off um but he's like uh, yeah but i fucking love hercules i love greek mythology and i'm like you don't know shit about greek like you know i, I got agitated and i was drunk I mean, you don't know shit about Greek fool. Any, 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 any imbecile will know that it's not Hercules; it's Heracles. And everyone just started laughing. I know. And um, but yeah, uh, Diocletian. You know, he created the. I know I went off on a tangent. My apologies. But yeah, he created the command economy as well. You know, like I said, he was basically the progenitor of feudalism. And the command economy. You know, this is how much, obviously, that that, that, that econo economic policy was not enacted at all because it was just going to be impossible. But he created the guilds. He was the one like, okay, you have to be part of this guild and you're going to work here and this is how much you're going to get paid and your son is going to work here and you can't move anywhere without permission because then you're going to fuck up the whole economy. So it really became autocratic. And I was alluded to earlier that that they finally called it for what it is, especially Diocletian. A lot of people say that the reign of Diocletian is the the beginning of the reign of the dominant 
which is kings, monarchs. You know, he made himself seem like he's the one. He, another great innovation. Well, not great innovation. Great innovation. It's a fucking terrible innovation, but innovation nonetheless. He was the first one that really started to say, God appointed me to be the king. I'm God's representative on earth. So, which is a very, very intelligent, intelligent boy. Because like I said before in the previous video, the lack of legitimacy, fucking hell. My apologies, guys. The fucking shit is burning out. Um, so the lack of legitimacy really fucks shit up in Rome. So he saw that. He's like, I can't be relying upon Rome to be legit to legitimize my government to legitimize my rule. Because that was the part that was the dawn of the principate, and that's what probably led to the big ass problem in the first place. I can't rely on the legitimacy in relation of, of like my legitimacy cannot rely upon soldiers because look what's happened. Soldiers kill and make emperors like every time they shit, it seems like. So he's like, Where do I go to? And he realized and he realized Jupiter. He's like Jupiter appointed me God. And he's the really one that created the separation of men between him and men. You know, like with the Principate, people were very congenial. And yet Augustus inviting men over for dinner. And, you know, but he was like, no, you got to go through this big ass ring to see me. I'm going to be dressed in the nine with gold watches. You know, having this constant display of splendor and domination. So he really didn't enact a lot of shit. I'm not completely done with the Tetrarchy right now. It's going with the Christian purges. Um, you know, he was the one that really enacted the system-wide persecution of the Christians. Very interesting indeed. So that's what I'm on right now. Um, it's very fascinating, Diocletian. And, and obviously, it's just going to go downhill from here. Like, you know, we could talk about Constantine and we'll get to them. We'll get to him eventually for sure. So, Till next time, guys. It's only been three days and I literally, I, I woke up today wanting to go to the gym. So... But I had to go control myself because myself, I was like, dude, you only been resting for two days, basically. Because last time I worked out was Monday. I'm like, dude, you're not going to just rest for two days and go to the gym all over again. You're crazy. But that itch is coming back, man. I can't wait to go back. Um, but it is what it is. So until next time, guys, I just started, I think I already said this. Yeah, that I started uh, the Annals of Imperial Rome by Tacitus because fuck Xenophon. I'm not going to read Xenophon. Uh, maybe later. Because I'm already starting to see some of the prejudices in Tacitus, but we'll get to him tomorrow once I get a little bit more reading then. Because I've only read for like I've only read like thirty pages, and um, I'm, I just started the book, so I'm not gonna give my opinions on the first thirty pages of the book. So, um, so next time, guys, remember don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please feel please feel free to drop them down below, of course. And until next time, guys, peace.